Uh, the first one is called Ode to the Crossfader. And uh, again, so a little bit, I started out as, as a rapper. That's how I began writing. I'm 38, I started writing when I was, or rapping when I was 11, so 27 years ago. Um, which gave me a, a long foreground, right, in this whole thing. Meter, rhyme, accent, metaphor, it's all, if you listen to good hip hop, it's all in there. It's poetry. Um, so, hip hop shows, out throughout the, shows up throughout the book. Um, a crossfader, for those of you who aren't sure, um, there's an instrument that a DJ uses it's called a mixer, right? He has a turntable here, a turntable here. And on that mixer, there's a lever called a crossfader, which allows him to fade from one turntable to the other. So he's mixing, blending. <coughs> Is that cool? Okay. Good? Okay. So um, it allows him to mix, cut, scratch, do all these things, and blend the music. Uh, this is old to the crossfader. Got this mix board itch, this bass line lifted from my father's dusty wax. Forty crates stacked in the back of the attic, this static in the headphones hum in the blood, this deep bass buckshot thump in the chest. Got reasons and seasons pressed to both palms. Two coins from each round pressed to both palms. Just memory, memory crops faded and cued. These knuckles, nicks, and night sweat rights. This frantic abacus of scratch. Got blood in the crates, in the chest, in the dust. Feel hollers to break beats. My father's dusty wax. My father's dust got reasons. Got night sweats and hollers pressed to both palms. Break beats and hollers pressed to both palms. Static in the attic. Stack crates of memory, memory, dust, blood, and memory. Cross faded and base. Cross faded and cued. Cross faded and static. Stack hollers got reasons in the dust, in the chest, got seasons in the blood, in the headphones hum. This deep, deep bass, bass, buckshot blood, pressed to both palms. My father's dust, pressed to both palms, got reasons, and reasons, and reasons, and reasons, reasons. <laughs> so, this idea of music showing up, I was talking to uh, an audience the other night. Um, and as I'm growing into myself as a man, I'm knowing or noticing uh, the personal. I talked about earlier, like the historical um, role of music, right, uh, for a collective. But also, um, you know, I'm listening to music that my father listened to, and that's kind of scary. But <laughs> but I'm, I'm realizing what it, what it means, right? You know, you see, you know, your father going through his life experiences and the music that would um, soothe him, right, while he's living through his blues. Became, becomes my own soundtrack. Uh, huge Marvin Gaye fan. When I was living here in D.C., I actually um, lived in an apartment. I could look out my window and see Marvin Gaye's old high school, Cardozo High School out there. Any Marvin Gaye fans here? Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. So you know the song Trouble Man. Right. This poem's called Trouble Man. It's the bone of a question caught in your throat. Pre-dawn size of the day's first traffic Shoulders like fists under your skin. Say it's raining this morning. You just left a woman's blue musk and duvet to find devil knows what in the world. Your wet collar, too thin jacket, no match for pissed off sky gods. And say this car pulls near. Plastic bag for passenger side window, trading rain for music. Marvin Gaye. And maybe you know this song. How long since the man you called father troubled the hi-fi, smoldering Newport in hand, and ran this record under a needle? How long since the man's broken falsetto colored every hour in the day? Years since he drifted, dreaming into rice fields, stammered crack Viet Cong, gunboats and helicopters swirling in his head. Years since his own long walks, silent returns, and Marvin's many voices, his only sound. He came up harder than you know, your father. Didn't make it by the rules. Your father came up hard, didn't get to make no rules. Graying beard, callous hands, fingernails thick as nickels, you were the boy who became that man, without meaning to. And know now, a man's life 
is never measured in beats, but beat downs. Not line breaks, just breaks. You hear Marvin fade down the avenue and it caresses you like a break. Your father, Marvin, and men like them have already mourned every book you will ever write. Mm -hmm. This you know, baby. This you know. Mm -hmm. So this book is also a part of Building Roman. So there's, you know, coming of age, things happening throughout. Um, and some of the poems stretch back as far as uh, the early 70s, late 70s. Uh, this one does. It's called Into the Dragon. And uh, Reggie requested this. I was going to read it anyway. Oh. <laughs> but I'm glad you like it. Uh, you guys remember that movie, Into the Dragon? Mm -hmm. Okay. Classic. Bruce Lee, right? Bruce Classic. Lee. Classic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, my favorite scene in the movie, especially when I was a kid, was um, the scene early on where Jim Kelly, also known as Black Belt Jones, uh, <laughs> he's walking down the street and these like 10 squad cars pull up, right? These cops jump out, and I guess they're gonna, you know, Roddy King him. But, you know, it's Black Belt Jones, so he's not going out like that. So, you know, he does his party thing. You know, Afro doesn't get mushed at all. <laughs> and by the end of the scene, there's these 30 cops lying out in the back, and he gets in one of the squad cars and drives off, right? And I thought that was cool. So, uh, <laughs> at five years old, it was a really strong image for me. This poem, uh, called Into the Dragon, takes place in Los Angeles, 1976. For me, the movie starts with a black man leaping into an orbit of badges, tiny moons catching the sheen of his perfect black afro, arc kicks, karate chops, and 30 cops on their backs. It starts with the swag. The cool lean into the leather front seat of the black and white he takes off in. Deep hallelujahs of moviegoers drowning out the wah wah guitar. Salt and butter high fives. Right on, brother. And daddy, glowing so bright he can light the screen all by himself. This is how it goes down. Friday night, and my father drives us home from the late show. Two heroes Cadillac and across King Boulevard. In the car's dark cab, we jab and clutch Jim Kelly and Bruce Lee with popcorn breath and almost miss the lights flashing in the cracked side mirror. Now I know what's under the seat, but when the uniforms approach from the rear quarter panel, when the fat one leans so far into my father's window, I can smell his long day's work. When my father, this John Henry of a man, Hides his hammer, <coughs> doesn't buck, tucks away his baritone, license and registration shaking as if showing a bathroom pass to a grade school principal. I learned the difference between cinema and city, between the movie house cheers of old men and the silence that gets us home. <laughs> 